Hello, do I need to say my name again? Well, I'm a refreshers now, Miss. My, my family visitors now, Miss. So, my name is Ogoli Godwin, and welcome back to MOG Economics. And if this is the very first time, welcome to MOG Economics. I hope you enjoy this particular video. Now, this class was requested for by Temple of Priest Sisters, and I hope that when it is made available, Temple of Priest Sisters will be able to. And uh, they will get notified. He is it he now? He or she or they? Because it's Temple of Priest Sisters. So I don't know how many people are checking the videos from that particular um, source. Now the topic today is demand and supply equilibrium analysis with simultaneous equations part one. Now there are times when we have to deal with two or more markets at the same time, and in this case, our, our in such cases we need to make use of you know we are we'll be having uh, quite a number of equations, and so we need to make use of maybe a simultaneous equation to solve for the variables involved and um, you know simultaneous equations uh, it has simultaneous, there, there are different ways of solving simultaneous equations uh, first uh, there is the substitution method the elimination method the graphical method that students learn in, in, in their high schools um, the matrix method that we be treating afterwards in a subsequent uh, class uh, I think in the next in the next couple of classes we should be talking about matrices and determinants and now we can use them to solve simultaneous equations. But this class is particularly limited to, you know, solving this kind of equilibrium, solving simultaneous equations using substitution and elimination method. Now, this video will be talking about how to solve for equilibrium in uh, how to solve for equilibrium price, equilibrium quantity, and what have you using the substitution method. So we have an exercise on the board which says, given the following set of equations for two related goods, two related goods, which simply tells us that um, the goods might be complement or substitute. So that's why you have the related goods. If they are not related, it's need to have stated egg roll, which we denote as E, and bread, which we denote as B. Find the equilibrium conditions for each market using the substitution and elimination method. Now I already mentioned that this particular video will be making of the substitution method. We'll be using the substitution method to solve whatever we are solving you know and in the video that is going to succeed this one we'll be talking about elimination method so we you know we'll be, we'll be approaching this same question but then we're using the elimination method and as a student after you've studied substitution method and elimination method whichever pleases you to use in your test or exam or in an exercise that you require these things for you'll be able to choose which one is best for you and there are times when test exams and what have you specify the method i should use as i said um, earlier we would also be using i think by the time we get to matrices and determinants i would i would um use this question again i use this question again we'll use our matrices our knowledge of matrices and determinants to look for the equilibrium price and quantity all right now so what do we do we have the demand function for egg row which is 82 minus 3 pe plus plus pb now note that there are two prices the price of air and the price of bread so that means the price of besides the price of air grow there is the price of a related which is bread it also has an impact on the quantity demanded of air grow on the demand for air grow not quantity demanded on the demand for air grow now you have the uh, supply function now you also have the demand function for bread this is qdb and then you have the supply function for bread so how are we going to go about this? So first I name this first I name this equation one. First I name this this is our equation one, then this is equation two, uh, this is equation three, three, and then this is equation four. So what are we going to do? Don't mind me. Alright. <clears throat> Equilibrium requires that quantity demanded equals quantity supplied. I could state yours, you could say equilibrium requires that quantity supplied equals quantity demanded. We are saying the same thing. Just make sure that you state that condition first that at equilibrium position, the quantity demanded is equal to the quantity supplied. Simply because it is not at every position or it's not at every price, it is not at every price that quantity demanded equals quantity supplied of a commodity. So that's as we stated, it is very important. So equilibrium requires that. Um, so I could just say at equilibrium, equilibrium quantity demanded equals equals quantity supply. And by extension, so let's start let's start with the air group market. So quantity demanded of air group equals the quantity supplied of air group. Okay, this might be a little bit lengthy, but no problem. So what's the quantity demanded of air group? This is it. So we have eighty-two minus three pe plus pb 
equals uh, the supply function minus 5 plus 15 PE. So we collect like terms. When we collect like terms, we have 82 plus 5 minus 3 PE. This comes and becomes a minus minus 15 PE plus PB equals 0. Now this is um, 87 minus 18 PE plus PE plus PB equals 0. So I want to take the constant to the other side. So you have minus 18 PE minus 18 PE plus PB equals minus 87. So I call this equation 5. Equation 5. Yeah. Now, what is the next thing we have to do? We do the same thing for uh, the bread market. So, equilibrium at equilibrium, please remember to state that at equilibrium. So, we have Q, Q, DB equals Q, SB. So, it's only at equilibrium that we have that. And what is, so we have 92, 92 plus 2 PE minus 4 PB. So equals the supply function which is minus 6, minus 6 plus 32 PB. So we collect like terms as well. So we have 92 plus 6 plus 2 PE. Okay, minus 4. This is plus 6 plus of minus 6 here. So I break it inside because it's plus 6. Minus 4 PB. Then this is plus minus 32 PB equals 0. So we simplify this to have 98 plus 2 PE minus 4 minus 32 gives us minus 36 PB equals 0. Now to simplify this further, we take the constant to the other side. So we have 2 PE minus 36 PB equals minus 98. Minus 98, and I call that 2 PE minus 36 PB. Okay, that's correct. So minus 98 that's equation 6. Equation 6. So what we have to do is to combine equation 5 and 6. So we've not even attempted the question really. Combine equations 5 and 6. So what is equation 5? This is equation 5. So we have uh, minus, I wanted to see the board, minus 18 PE uh, plus PB plus PB equals minus 87. Then this other equation which is 2PE minus 36PB equals minus 98. So, there we go. So, how do we then use the substitution method? To use the substitution method is basically simple. You can just, we may, you can choose any of the, you can choose any of the equation 5 and 6 and make any of the variables subject of the uh, equation. Now, let's say I'm choosing the equation. Why do I choose it so that I don't, um, uh, Okay, wait, this becomes, um, that's equation 5, 6, so we combine equation 5 and 6, okay, so in equation 5 now, in equation 5, we make the price of bread the subject of the equation, the price of bread, so this is equation 5, right, so equation 5 says, so minus 18, uh, PE, okay, let me just write it, let me just write it, make, the price of bread, make the price of bread, make the price of bread the subject of equation 5. So let me just leave it that, that way. Equation 5. So you have minus 18 PE plus PB equals minus 87. So the price of bread, this is bread, right? So PB equals minus 87 plus 18 PE. And it's 7 plus 18 PE, and that gives us equation 7. You know, the next thing I'm going to do now, you this is where substitution comes in place. So we substitute equation 7, Substi, substitute equation 7 in equation 6. This was equation 5, so we went to the subject of this equation. So whatever we give, then substitute it into this place. That's just the way it goes. So we have 2 PE. This is equation 7, right? Equation 6, rather. 2 PE minus 36 into bracket minus 87 plus 18 PE. Hope you understand. So this is, um, so you have 2 PE minus 36. This is PB. So what we have PB to be all of this before. 
So we lift all of this and we place it. We use a place PB where it was, and all of this equals minus 98. So when we proceed, we have 2 PE minus times minus will give us a plus. Then 36 multiplied by 87 is going to give us 3132. Please use your calculator to verify that. Then minus times plus is going to give us a minus. 36 times 18 is going to give us minus. It's going to give us 648 PE. So we have 648 PE. Then everything equals minus 98. Minus 98. Then we collect like terms. Right like terms. So we have 2 PE, 2 PE minus 648 PE. That's going to give us minus 646 PE, right? 646 PE equals then minus 98. Then this becomes minus 3132, right? Right, so we have minus 646. Uh, 646 PE uh, equals minus minus 98 minus 3132. This gives us minus 3230. Minus 3230. So we just divide both sides. Let me just, just do this here. So we can just say minus 646 PE equals minus 3230. Three, so we divide both sides by minus 646. Minus 646. So this cancels this, including the minus. Minus cancel minus. Then PE equals by the time you put 3230 in your calculator divided by 646, we having 5. We having 5. So the price, the, so because we are looking, what we are looking for is equilibrium price. Then we said quantity demand and equals quantity supply. So this is an equilibrium price. Is an equilibrium price, so you have to put an asterisk on it. So it's a P star is an equilibrium price. So from there, since we already have what the price of E is, then we come back to we come back to where we made to be the subject. You know, we made the, we made the price of bread the subject of the equation of equation seven. I already have what P E is, so definitely we can get the price of bread. So what we just do is we substitute substitute. Uh, the value of PE now substitutes the value of PE in equation. So see the value of PE in equation seven. In equation seven. So what do we then have? So let me just let me write this. So PB equals minus eighty seven minus eighty seven plus eighteen PE minus eighty seven plus eighteen PE. So price of bread now. Uh, the equilibrium price of bread now equals minus 87 plus 18 into bracket 5. So the price of bread is uh, minus 87 plus 90, and the price of bread equals 3. Alright, so that's also an equilibrium price. It's also an equilibrium price. So we just note that way an equilibrium price. You see, so we've gotten our PB and we've gotten our, our PE. So the next thing we're going to do is so what is going to be the equilibrium? Quantity of bread was going to be the equilibrium quantity of um, what is it that good? The equilibrium quantity of bread and the equilibrium quantity of air group. Now, if you look at the demand function for the two of them, you know, they have the two prices. So that means uh, we were right in looking for the two prices because if we didn't do that, we wouldn't have been able to get the point, the uh, quantity demanded of you know, the equilibrium quantity demanded rather uh, the quantity demanded of um, air group as well as the quantity demanded of bread. You know, this is PE, this is PV. Actually, we could just input our values into their supply functions, okay, PE into this into this place, and then we get our quantity supply. And we could, also, we, could, we could do that for bread as well, and we'll get our quantity supply for bread. Um, and our answers are going to be the same things because we are talking about equilibrium. So it's only at um, an equilibrium price, at a certain price, okay, it's only at a certain price of bread, and as well as a certain price of what do you call it, of air good, I'll be able to get. Uh, a point where your quantity demanded is equal to your quantity supply. Okay, so now what we just have to do is substitute. Uh, let me remove the board so that we are. No, let me write it first. Substitute, uh, substitute the values, the values of PE, the equilibrium, and PB. Let me just call it star from here. So there is. So there is in equations no in any of okay in any of equations in any of equations one to four 
Then you have equations 1 to 4. Now this is equation 1, equation 2, equation 3, equation 4. So uh, now let me let me probe the body bit. Okay, let's proceed. So you don't you don't necessarily have to substitute these things into equation one to four, but I just wanted to like see something, you know, just just verify something. So what's equation one? Equation one says QDE. I don't want to rewrite it. QDE equals I have 82, 82 minus 3P. What is PE? Equilibrium price. What's the PE? PE gave us 5. So 3 into bracket 5. Then um, plus PB is 3. So we, what we have here is um, it's equal to so we have 82 minus 15 plus 3. Minus 15 plus 3 is minus 12. Then you take away that from this, you have 70. So that means the quantity uh, demanded is 70 at those prices. And let us check if it is the same thing as the quantity supplied. It has to be the same thing. And if it's not, then we're in trouble. So QSE equals minus 5 plus 15. What is PE? P e is 5. So you have minus 5 plus 75. And that's going to give us 70. So you see that um, there is equilibrium. So at the at um, the prices at the price that we've obtained uh, for the for the market of echo, so quantity demanded equals quantity supplied. Now I just did this, you know, just to just to tell you that it doesn't matter which function you put the values that you've obtained, you are going to get the same answer. So it's not necessary you verify using this means. So you could have just inputted your you could have just put your values into QDE for example. Or QSE seems seems simpler. It will keep S and obtain 70. Then they have, they have stated the condition as A says quantity at equilibrium. Okay, since quantity demand equals quantity supply, definitely quantity demanded equals 70. So you don't have to use the two equations. Now let's check the market for, for bread and uh, let's let's find out what the equilibrium quantity is. The equilibrium quantity is so 92 plus 2. What is PE? P is 5. Minus 4 into bracket 3. So you have 92 plus 10 minus 12. Okay, so this gives us 10 minus 12 is minus 2. They take that from this, they have a 90. Now let's verify using the supply function. So QSB, QSB equals minus 6 plus 32 into bracket 3, and that's minus 6 plus 96, and that's also going to be worth 90. So as equilibrium, um, QDB equals QSB. Very good. That's equilibrium. So we are right. Yeah, right. If we if one were 80 and the other was 17, if one were 90 and the other were 89, then they are in trouble now. The last question is last question is the question says that the exercise says that the goods are related, now, which means they could be complement or substitute. Now, are they complements? Are they substitute? How do you tell me? In fact, basically, immediately I saw the question, I think I knew, but I don't know if you if you did. So we don't need to solve anything to know that these goods are, let's say, complements or substitutes. What you just have to do is check their respective demand functions. Simple. Now, what you just have to do is look at the demand function here. Okay, then you check the signs. Okay, so what we have here is a minus. Of course, you know, normally the higher the price of a commodity, the lower the quantity demand is, right? So this is a minus, which says that if the price of this, if the price of ergo should increase, our uh, quantity demanded will fall because it's a minus. So if this were to go up by, let's say, one. Quantity demanded will fall, okay, because it's a minus, which is basically what we expect. But then, the price of bread that is a related good has a positive relationship with the quantity demanded of ego. So, which means that since this is a plus, an increase in the price of bread may increase the quantity demanded. We increase the demand for ego, okay? Sorry, it's not quantity demanded now. An increase in the price of bread we increase the demand for echo like like seriously so what kind of goods are they now in order to analyze that although we've done that in one of our videos but let me just brush it so the first thing that we uh, observe is price of bread right so an increase in the price of bread so let me just write it here if there's an increase if there's an increase in the price of bread other things being equal there should be a reduction in the quantity demand quantity demanded now of bread there should be a reduction in that okay now the price of the related good which is which is um echo didn't change so i use this to denote that so price of echo didn't change but then we are now seeing that the quantity demanded for echo which is in this case which is the demand the demand for echo is um 
increasing. The demand for ego is increasing. So, an increase in the price of bread, all right, reduces the quantity demanded. The quantity demanded of bread. Uh, the quantity demanded of bread, basically, other things being equal. And we can see from here that it's causing an, an increase in the demand for ego. So. There's an increase in the price of this, and that is causing an, op uh, an opposing effect in the quantity in the quantities you know, of of both commodities. So, what do we call this? We call this substitute. All right, substitute. An increase in the price of this product led to a reduction in its quantity uh, in the quantity demanded, which then made buyers, on average, to buy more of egg growth. So, which caused an increase in the demand for egg growth. So, these goods are substitute. Now, let's verify that using the Demand for you can use the supply function to get that. Use demand function to get the relationship between goods. Now, let's check the demand function of um, bread. Now, look at it. There is there is QDB. This is not this is not PB basically. If this were PB, then would have been having problems because uh, demand price demand shouldn't be having a positive relationship with the price of a commodity. You know, on average, like other things being equal, except the price for a luxury or something like that. So now let's come back to what we basically understand. So an increase in the quantity demand, an increase in the price of egg growth, of egg growth, that's a positive relationship, right? An increase in the price will lead to an increase in the uh, demand for bread. An increase in the demand for bread since, since it is a plus. Now that is also telling us that an increase in the price of egg growth, right? Other things being equal. What this is not saying is that it will reduce the quantity demanded, the quantity demanded of egg growth. Okay. And um, we are, as well as nothing, nothing happened to the price of bread, right? It's nothing happened to the price of bread, but then it is resulting into an increase in the demand for bread. All right, so we have an increase in this. So which means an increase in the price of this commodity is making consumers consume less of it and more of the related good. Okay, and that simply tells us that these goods are substitute. So you don't need the other function as well to, you know, to you don't need the two functions. So let's now okay these goods are substitutes but i'm just using this in case uh someone in your class maybe there's a question like this somebody use somebody use this to show that the goods are substitutes and then you decided to use this to show that the goods are substitutes both of you are correct so that's that about that in our next video we're talking about we'll be attempting this question again and i won't rub it off that's just something i won't rub it off but we'll be using elimination method to attempt it so thank you for watching and see you in the next video. Temple of Prayer Sisters, I hope you get to see this and I will appreciate your comments in the comment section. And if this video hasn't addressed what you really want, please make sure you leave your comments and we see what we can do about it. See you next time. Hope you enjoyed the video you just saw. If you want more of our videos, please make sure you subscribe to the channel and click on the notification bell. Now there is a way to enjoy to make the best of our YouTube channel which is to go to the playlist section of every video or of every topic so what you have to do is just type emoji economics on youtube when the page displays you no know, make sure you subscribe a bell button appears immediately so you click on that bell button then go to the playlist section so you're going to see our uh, videos playlist description and all of that so just go to the playlist section and whatever topic you are looking for click on look for the playlist and click on um, the video now our playlist have their classes have the classes arranged in a very chronological manner so if you want to see a class on ISLM so it starts from the beginning the simple ones to the um, difficult to the complex ones so if you want to see a video on let's say elasticity of demand so you start from what is price elasticity so from there then to the basic ones and on and on so i'm just telling you that in case you really want to make the best of this youtube channel and there's also one thing that i want to add um, which is that our youtube classes may not be enough for you, you may want um, you may want a regular interaction with uh, with the tutors and all of that. So what you just have to do is to check the description of the video. You are going to find a WhatsApp link. So, but before you do that, I really have to tell you that clicking that link is going to lead you to our one of our schools. So it's going to lead to some of our schools. So we have um, MOG School of Economics on WhatsApp, and we make it our YouTube channel to run the groups. So the classes are paid for. So you are meant to pay for them. So to join our Econometry School. So that is 2,500 Naira per month. And to join our microeconomics or macroeconomics schools, so that is 2,000 Naira per month. We also have, our math, we don't have classes or we don't have schools of mathematical economics because, you know, uh, microeconomics has its mathematical aspects as well as macroeconomics. So the mathematical aspect of macroeconomics is treated with, is treated in the macroeconomic school and the mathematical aspect of microeconomics is treated with the micro, microeconomic school as well. So I'll see you next time. Thank you very much for watching.